When we talk about funding any project, we have two types of fund, either unlimited fund or limited fund, which we call it capital rationing. So what do we mean by unlimited fund? It means that we have funds that's available for any profitable project. Therefore, we will accept all feasible projects, all profitable projects, because we have excess fund that can cover all profitable projects. But in reality, it doesn't matter how much how rich you are, we have limited fund. So what do I mean by limited fund? It means that I need to choose only the most profitable project. And that's why we call it capital rationing. So let's get an example. Let's assume that the cost of our project will be the same for all projects, which is 10%. And then we have three options. The first one, a factory, it will give us a return 20%. Then we have a school, it will give us a return of 16%. And then we have a hospital, it will give us a return of 8%. Let's assume that we have unlimited fund. So if we have unlimited fund, we have enough fund to cover all profitable projects, but I will choose profitable projects only. Therefore, as long as the return is bigger than cost of capital, we will do the project. So for a factory, 20% is a return is bigger than 10% cost of capital. So we will make the project. For a school, it has a return of 16%, which is bigger than the cost of capital 10%. We will make the project. But for hospital, a return of 8% is lower than cost of capital 10%. Therefore, we're not going to make the project, not because we don't have enough fund, but because this project is not profitable. But what if we have limited fund, which means we don't have enough fund to cover all projects. We need to choose only one. Therefore, we need to choose the highest feasible project, the highest profitable project. So if I look here, we have two profitable projects, which is a factory and school, but a factory will give us higher return. Therefore, if we have limited fund, we'll choose only a factory, but we're not going to do school, or hospital. When we talk about projects, we have two types of projects, either independent projects or mutually exclusive projects. What do I mean by independent projects? Independent project, it means that if I accept one project, this doesn't eliminate others, which means I can make all projects as long as they are feasible and profitable. Mutually exclusive, it means that if I accept one project, I have to reject the other. So let me give you an example about each one of them. So let's assume that for independent projects, the cost of capital for all projects is 10%. We have a factory, it will give us a return 20%. And we have a school that will give us a return of 16%. Since both of them has a return bigger than cost of capital, therefore, we are going to accept all of them because they are independent, which means if we choose one, it will not eliminate the choice of the other. So we will accept both projects. But let's assume that now we are going to build a factory. So in order to build a factory, we need to buy machines. From where we'll get the machine? From Japan or from China? So now buying the machines, it will be an example of mutually exclusive, which means if I will buy machines from Japan, I'm not going to buy them from China. If I'm going to get my machine from China, I'm not going to get it from Japan, which means if I choose one project, I have to reject the other. And that's why you need to be careful when you look at these projects. What is the type? Are they independent projects or mutually exclusive projects? Which means if you choose one, you have to reject the other. When we talk about cash flow, we have two types of cash flows, either conventional cash flows or unconventional cash flows. So what do I mean by conventional cash flows? Conventional cash flows is like the normal cash flow, which means at the beginning of the project, you pay for investment, for machines, for equipments, for raw material. Therefore, at the beginning, it will be cash outflow. And then the rest of the years, it will be a positive cash flow, which means the sign of the cash flow, it changed only once. At the beginning, we have negative and then we have positive. What about unconventional cash flow? The sign of cash flow will change many times, which means the negative sign will appear many times. It will appear during the project. So let's get an example about conventional cash flow. We could have one year construction period. So we'll have a negative cash flow in the first year. And then for all the rest of the years, it will be cash inflow. And that's why you put a positive sign. Or we could have two years construction. Therefore, it would be negative cash outflow for the first two years. But afterwards, it will be all of them positive. If you look here, there is no cash outflow during the project. But with unconventional cash flow, the negative sign will appear more than once. Therefore, we'll discover that we have a negative sign during the project, 
lifetime. So if we look here, we have a negative cash outflow in year one, in year two and three, we have positive cash flow. And then in year four, we have a cash outflow is the negative sign. Or it could be here, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, which means the negative sign appears more than once.